Well, hello, my friends, it's Gregory here, and welcome to another exciting episode of Antique Acquisitions. Today, we're going to talk about a very exciting object. This is a Bible box, and it's a, not just any Bible box. It's a 17th century ship's Bible box. So we're going to get into that in just a few seconds. So hang around. Alright, so let's talk about this Bible box. But before we get started, I have to admit that I have some pretty serious seller's remorse right now as I really look at the beauty of this object. It sold over the weekend and I realized that I needed to make a video about it before it gets out the door. And I really hope that it's going to a museum or somewhere that it can really be appreciated for what it is. I know that some other things we've sold here at Old Europe Antique Home Furnishings have gone to museums, uh, the Johnny Cash Museum in Nashville, for instance. Also recently, Estes Park, the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, uh, bought some chairs from us and they weren't particularly old. They were red leather wingback chairs and they are in the caretaker's cottage just outside the Stanley Hotel and that's more or less a museum you can go in there and take a tour and and they're in there in the library of that uh, building i did make a video on that for antique acquisition so i hope you'll go back and take a second to watch that video and so occasionally we do have some things that go on to some pretty unique places i know there was an 18th century painting i had in one time that went to a museum they tested the paint they tasted the canvas and sure enough turns out to be ex by exactly who we represented it to be by 18th century british painter george romney and uh, so it's in the museum somewhere out there at least it was uh, several years ago and so i hope this ends up in a place like that where it can really be appreciated for what it is because it's a unique object you don't see a lot of these and when you really examine it and you look at the metalwork well, this would have been all all done by hand this metalwork and it's a very substantial object really amazing the amount of effort that went into creating this and i also noticed as i was preparing for this video that the fabric this red fabric on here is identical in both color and texture to the fabric on an 18th century tapestry that i have out in the showroom there and it's also identical to the tassel on this keychain that goes to this 18th century iron chest and it's called an iron chest for a reason it's the precursor to the modern safe after the industrial revolution this design evolved into what we would think of as a modern safe and i actually did a video for antique acquisitions on that topic as well so i hope you'll take a second to check that out okay well let's go back in time and just kind of try to set the stage for this Bible box. It was made in the 17th century or the 1600s. So keep in mind that it had only been a hundred and some 150 years since the printing press had been invented by Gutenberg at that point in history. So the idea of people having their own large printed Bibles was still somewhat new they would have been expensive and it would have been something that you would have really cherished and wanted to take care of and so in a sense that's kind of what this box is it's almost a safe to protect the bible which was a very valuable thing okay so while we're on the topic of the printing press i do want to mention um, that i do have in the iron chest here a set of books by aristotle from the 16th century so these would have been printed prior to the construction of this box. Let's see if we can 
you can kind of get an idea of the print. And I also have the letter that came with these books when they came over from uh, Austria in the 1950s. They came over from the, uh, let's see, uh, Österreich National Libi Bibliothek. So the Austrian National Library. So we have those as well. But that's also included in the video that I did on, on the Iron Chest. Now one thing that I do want to mention before I forget is that the Bible box was kind of a precursor to the laptop desk, as you can see here. In the beginning, these Bible boxes were for the protection of the Bible contained within, but some of them evolved to have a lip at the bottom, so you could actually take the Bible out and place it on top of it, and it became like a lectern. You could read the Bible right there, and eventually that morphed into a writing surface as well. This is an example of a Davenport desk, also known as a captain's desk. And further along the evolution of desks, here's an example that I keep in my own office at home. It's a desk that was made in the 1860s for John McNaught by his congregation as a token of appreciation. I did, I mentioned, I discussed this, this desk at length in the, uh, intro for the old Europe antique home furnishings YouTube channel. So you can get a little more information about that desk there. All right, let's go out and take a look at that tapestry and model ship that I was telling you about. You know, one of the nice things about having an antique shop is that there's really a limitless supply of things to talk about and make videos about like this. And so it's quite a privilege, okay? Here we have the tapestry that I was telling you about, 18th century tapestry. And let's go back around here and I'll show you this ship model. This model ship actually came from a museum and I'm going to do an entire video for the Antique Acquisitions YouTube channel about this model i just haven't gotten around to it yet and you can't really tell from this picture just how big this is i need to measure it but i think it's at least seven feet long so let's take a little closer look at that because that is the kind of ship that you would have found a bible box like the one that we're talking about in in the 17th century and this is in fact a model of a 17th century ship the sovereign of the seas the sovereign of the seas was a 17th century warship of the english navy she was ordered as a 90 gun first rate ship of the line of the english royal navy but at launch was armed with 102 bronze guns at the insistence of the king it was later renamed hms sovereign and then hms royal sovereign at the restoration of charles ii well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little something about history and antiques. And please don't forget to hit the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when additional episodes become available. We'll see you next time.